We, uh, for those of you who didn't get to see the Spinks Tyson fight, we have, do we have the footage, Hal, from, uh, from HBO? Okay, this is from Atlantic City last night, and as you know, it was a first round knockout about uh, 1 minute 31 seconds into the bout. Hal, roll the footage, and then we'll see if we can't take a look at it again in slow motion. All right, uh, devastating punching power there. <laughs> Boom, there you go. You just, unbelievable, I didn't... See, 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 because the producers are such jerks and we don't have a writers, that's the kind of crap you're going to have to put up there. <laughs> right there, that's, that's, we're tapped out. That, that's, what you see there is the result of two weeks of meetings. Here we go, in slow motion. Oh, it's a powerful, there we go, okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, say hello to our good friend, Mr. Uh, Reverend Al Sharpton. Al, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. We're back. We're back. <clears throat> so I understand uh, you were in hell for the last. Been in hell. You know the whole thing stinks because uh, we don't have our writers here on this show, and we've been without them for four months, and we're having to do the show without the writers. Uh, and so I come back today. Today is the first show. Yes. The first show. Guess what I hear from NBC? What's nothing. That? Nothing. Not a, not a phone call, not a handshake, nothing. not a note, not a card, nothing. Welcome back, Dave. Thank you very much, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Privacy Wright. But I mean, now even... Here's Dave. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, even... Now, <laughs> when, I was, when I was married, even, even... I was married for like 10 years. That was some time ago. Some time ago. That's right, Paul. <laughs> even after the divorce... My wife was kind enough to let me stop by for it. So, and I just think that... <laughs> during, the, during the divorce proceedings. Oh, no, this is after the divorce. Oh, even after the divorce. Yeah. So, so I'm saying... saying that's right. So I'm saying if she could do that for yeah, me... Yeah. At least the network could call. Could something. Call the day one that of you're these boneheads, pick up the phone and call. The day you're going back... Unguarded, with, without your troops nothing. around I you. get nothing from these guys. Not even a basket of fruit? No, I got a basket of fruit. Oh, well. <laughs> but, it, but it wasn't from the right guys. It was from Mysterious Department. What is the name of the department? Talent Relations. Talent Relations. I couldn't be more honored to get something. <laughs> that's pretty high up in the uh, machinery here at NBC. Well, that's what they're in charge of at Talent Relations. Uh, anyway, did I mention that the uh, Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers are money-grubbing scum? Yeah. I think you did. Uh, what else are we doing here? Oh, oh, do you have any good stories? I got a great story. Let's hear it. You want to hear the story? Yes. All right, this is a pretty good story. This is my Paul Newman story. Okay. By the way, you'll be he hearing plenty of stories in the next few months. <laughs> Oh, here, let me show you these. Uh, Hal uh, Gurney, you know, our director, he uh, had some time on his hands and was doing some kind of odd experimentation with livestock up in his home in the Connecticut. And we, we have some photographs here. I don't know, it's, uh, these are bred for, I guess, sport and food. Can we get right in there? Get a nice tight shot of the... Uh... Okay. Let me get it. There it is. All right, here's my Paul Newman story. So I go to Indianapolis for the 500-mile the race. It's held every year. By the way, in doing this, uh, I was able to really anger the wife of the governor of the state of Indiana. So ask me about that tomorrow. Okay, we'll save that. So I see Paul, I'm there with my friends. I, I'm there with my friends, and I see Paul Newman mm -hmm. at, at a certain place at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, which is a vast facility, huge, enormous, 500,000 people attending this event. I see Paul Newman, he's going up a set of stairs. Listen how quiet he is. That's the sign of a good storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> if you can, if you can, yeah, I can, oh, look at this, there's our, see, we're doing the best we can without writers, we've added this, that's our security camera, yeah, that, that guy's up to no good, so I see, now I'm, now I'm in show business, yes. and, and of course, Paul Newman is in show business, so I think to myself, I can say hello to Paul Newman, and also impress my friends, see, so Paul is, is dressed all in white, well, you're giving me time cues? Our, our biggest goal here tonight is to kill time. <laughs> what? 
No, no, you should have come to the meeting. No, we're trying to forget the time cues. We've got to eat as much time as we possibly can. Because normally in this position, there'd be written fantastic material. written comedy, but thanks to the money-grubbing scum, we don't <laughs> have any. So, anyway, Paul, and he's dressed completely in white. He's got white pants, a white shirt, and a little white hat. He, he looked like a, a, an extra on the love boat. Okay. <laughs> but I know it's Paul Newman, because there's no mistaking this man. So, and we're about five feet away. I'll stand up for no apparent reason. <coughs> And, I, and I'm surrounded by my little friends that I've brought to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to try and impress them with what's going on. Paul Newman walks over, and he makes a right turn and goes up a flight of stairs. And I said, hi, Paul. All right. Now, Paul says and does this. He continues to walk. This is what Paul does. Uh. Mm. <laughs> How are we doing on time now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We get all the time. And this strike may go on until uh, Christmas. So I hear. So I'm going I'm to ask every member of the, uh, the staff, Paul, you and the band, if, if you guys can't come up with, with stories. They don't have to be as good as the Paul Newman story. <laughs> but as, as this unfolds, we'll call on you to help kill a okay. little time here. We Hal, how are things in the uh, control room there? Fine. Yeah. Uh, Hal, I understand you've planned a little something uh, for tonight to help us kill some time. Oh, good. A little surprise. What will it be, Hal? Right, come on under control. Uh -huh. yeah, it's Hal Grooney, by the way, our uh, director, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> There's Hal right there. What's the surprise, Hal? Bring the lights up, please. Uh, Dave, I don't know if you know it, but uh, Pete Fadovich, our associate... Excuse me, Hal. Are you guys growing mushrooms in there? <laughs> Let me see us now. Oh, video. Bring the lights up. <laughs> okay. Dave, did you know that Pete Fadovich plays the accordion? <laughs> Thank you. Gee, you know, Hal... I, I, I didn't have the slightest clue, Hal. That well, I, I thought it was a little surprise for you. Take four again. All right, Pete, you're gonna. There's yeah. Pete back there, and yeah. you're gonna. Pete, what, what are you gonna play for us tonight? Oh, a little Lady of Spain. What is it, Hal? Lady of Spain, Dave. Uh, okay. Thank you. All right, uh, go ahead, uh, Pete. Anytime. There we go. All right. anything to kill a little time here that's that's all we're really trying to accomplish was to eat up some valuable network time okay that's Pete Fadovich playing Lady of Spain that's it okay well there you got another pretty good indication of what you're in for here tonight folks <laughs> Listen, I just wanted to uh, let you know we're back on the air. Oh, that's terrific. When are you going to start? No, okay, fine, Dave. Nice, nice talking with you. Take care. Nice talking to you, bye David. Bye-bye. Okay, that's the programming department. All right, Everybody, Paul, your story now? I was in Louisiana. Yeah. Where they're very proud of Bridget Jackson, by the way. That's Who works on this program, sure. Yes, she's a Louisiana gal. They're yeah. very, very proud of how she's done. Well, I was working on my record, you know, which is a kind of a regional thing, and... I was down there working on that, but you know how show business sometimes intersects with other forms of the business. I spent some time with, with the guy, his name is Bob Vernon, he's the guy who negotiated the contract for Deborah Murphy uh, and uh, to appear in Penthouse Magazine Ooh. and recreate those Ooh. poses, you know. Is this a story that we she can allegedly tell? Well, let's just say that, that uh, Mr. Vernon, the agent, assured me that TV evangelists do more than lay people. And, uh, <laughs> and that's what I, uh, that's what I learned in, in uh, Louisiana. And after all, there are no writers on the show. <laughs> so, and you're more to. than lay people. Well, what is, I hear Pete screaming. Why is Pete screaming in there? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, uh, despite the fact that we're functioning uh, under the handicap of no writers, we have a brand new television segment for you. Uh, and it's something we like to call, what are we calling this one? I don't have it written down. What? Oh, here it comes. Here it is right here. Our brand new segment. That's right. Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers. 
Paul, they have music for this? That was the music for that? Yeah. Okay. It's got Hal. lyrics, though. All right. You have lyrics? Yeah. They're right. Hal, Gurney's Network, Time Killers, and Just In Time. There's our, uh, our beloved uh, director, Hal Gurney. Hal, congratulations on having your very own uh, segment. What, uh, what can you tell us about this? Well, Dave, we're all uh, doing our best to keep going while the writers are out, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I thought the first thing we do is uh, something we worked up called the what, uh, This Day in History. This Day in you, History. You've probably heard this on uh, maybe radio shows. Yeah. So yeah. this will be entertaining and informative, eh, Hal? Well, yeah, I would get some uh, pad and pencils out uh, uh -huh. if you want to take this information Okay, out. This Day in History. Yeah, and this is fresh from the AP wire day. Uh -huh. so it's, all right. Uh, in, uh, in 1776, the Virginia State Constitution was adopted. Right. And Patrick Henry was the made governor. Uh huh. And uh, let's see. Oh, actress Ruth Wark is uh, 72 today. 72. Congrats. 72. Well, a happy yeah. birthday to Ruth. Nice Excuse going, Al. Take two, please. Do you have anything else, Al, there for your uh, Network uh, Time Killer debut? Yeah, take four. Uh, for the ladies, Dave, I thought maybe we'd show a little uh, uh, tape we have on menu helpers. Oh, menu uh, helpers. Terry, why don't you roll that? Here it comes. Okay. I particularly like this. All right, let's to prepare a five-day menu. For instance, Let's imagine it's Monday, and Mrs. Homemaker wants to prepare a taste-tempting meatloaf. Here's all she has to add to the ground beef. This new cooking sauce contains all the needed ingredients, specially blended. Mix it, shape it, pop it in the oven for an hour, and she's created a superb main dish meal. Gee, that's, that's great, Hal. That's very nice. That's we have five all together. Excuse me, Hal. Yeah, Dave. So we could have one of those each night, maybe. Sure. Let me ask you one question, Hal, and sure, then Dave. I think you're going to turn it over to uh, Pete for some yeah. music. Our, uh, our associate director, Pete yeah. Fadovich. Uh, you, you're not wearing a brand new shirt, are you, Hal? How'd you know? <laughs> How'd you know? I think, I think we can still <laughs> see the folds in that. <laughs> no, no. That's the way it's... Fun. Uh, would you widen out, please? Sorry, yeah. Uh, or come All right, Hal, listen, congratulations on this uh, wonderful new segment. I think it's really going to take off like there was a writer guild strike. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we have music to pay it off. Is right. that correct? Uh, Pete, uh, what do you have for us tonight? Pete hey, Fadovich, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Now. Did you hear that, Dave? Lady of Spain? Lady of Spain, Dave. All right, Lady of Spain. Take it away, Pete. <laughs> Pick it up a little bit. Pete, a little faster, will you? Pick it up a bit. Why, wow, that is the lamest. Uh, okay, we're going to do a uh, commercial and then we'll begin this uh, festivity here on uh, TV for you in a matter of minutes. Let's see. What else should we discuss? Uh, I'm going to tell a story. Oh, good. This last, is last night you told a story. Yes. Tonight I'll tell a story. This is because we have no professional comedy writers exactly. working for That's us. That's right. We have no material, no prepared uh, entertainment for you. So uh, it's, it's, the old, it's TV the old-fashioned way. Speaking of TV the old-fashioned way, I had something terrible happen to me a couple of months ago. Uh, the batteries on my remote control device uh, burned out. And, and I, had, I had to spend the evening watching TV the old-fashioned way. <laughs> I was, it was, I was exhausted. Uh, if, if I wanted to change the channel, I'd have to get up and go to the set and wow. do that. <laughs> see, when Clapton does that, that uh -huh. he plays oh, that. Oh, I see. Sure. When, so, he's confused. <laughs> All right. So, tonight's story, yeah. last night we heard a story from Paul, kind yes. of a seamy story. Well, it was just dealt with some of the darker things in right, our industry. But tonight is a good family story. Oh, good. And it, and it has to do with Hal Gurney, our director, and his beautiful wife... Gurney. I'm sorry, Hal Gurney. Hal Gurney. <laughs> Hal Gurney, our director, and his beautiful wife, Joan, and a man named Vince Johnson. You see, yeah. Hal Gurney and his beautiful wife, Joan, live in a lovely rural part of the state of Connecticut. And they have lived there for what, Hal? Nine years or so? Ten years. Ten years. 
And in this lovely community in which they live, there is a, a man, a farmer, a handyman, a, a town... What, what is he, Hal? He's a, a citizen, a, somebody you can trust. Solid citizen. A solid citizen. His name, is, his name is Vince Johnson, and he's a neighbor and someone you can turn to in, in time of need, and he, he can give you advice on crops, and he knows virtually everything there is to know about the community in which these folks all live. Now, I've had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Johnson because numerous, numerous occasions I have been invited by the Groonies to their home up there where they live. Gurney. Gurney. I, I bet you I've been invited, oh, dozens and dozens of times up to where they live there in this beautiful part of the state of Connecticut. Oh, several times I've been up there. And I feel that, I feel that, I feel that over the years that Hal and I have worked together, we've developed a very close rapport, and I feel the same about his beautiful and lovely and intelligent wife, Joan. So, yeah. a couple of months ago, I decided to phone Hal long distance, and uh, I got Joan on the phone, and I said, <clears throat> hello, Joan. I used a voice. I disguised my voice, and this is, this is what that voice was. I said, hello, Joan. Nah. No, here it was. I said, uh, hi, Joan. And she says, hello. I said, this is uh, Vince Johnson. Oh, hi. And I said, um, look, uh, when you're done there at the house uh, with your chores and so forth, uh, would you like to come down to my place for a cocktail? And, and Joan says, oh, hi, Dave, here's Hal. Uh. <laughs> now, okay, all right, so that wasn't a great story, no, it but it was story. much better than that awful thing you told last night. You mean about TV evangelists do more than lay people? Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. I, I take that, ladies and gentlemen, as a vote of confidence. Uh, we're, we're, oh, tonight, we, we have a brand new segment. We want to do it tonight. We want to get it done properly. By the way, Hal, have you seen uh, uh, Larry Budd uh, recently? Is he still with us? Did he make it through the yes, storm? Yes, he is, yeah. Uh, in fact, Corey, get a shot of uh, Larry Budd for him. Yeah. Can you do that for us? Mm, there he goes. He's on his way. Yeah. Okay. Did, did I do something wrong, Hal? This is fine. All right. He's ready to go. Okay. There he is, right there. Okay, good. <laughs> Uh -huh. He's he's still with us, isn't he, Hal? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Could be another job for Vince Johnson in one of those shallow graves you're always talking about. <laughs> they have their own kind of justice up there in that part of the country. <laughs> Uh, okay, we have a brand new segment. Despite the strike, we have a, a brand new segment. We did it last night. We screwed it up. We did it the night before. We screwed it up. Tonight, we think we have it. It's, of course, Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers. Paul, do you have a little music? <clears throat> Lovely, uh... There it is. Hal Gurney's uh, Network Time Killers. There's Hal. Hi, Hal. Can you hear me? Yeah, what do you have for us tonight? Well, Dave, uh... The menu helper that worked last night, uh -huh. uh, we have another one tonight. Oh, Everybody it's a menu helper, it. Paul. Okay. Little, little tips. Right. Yes. Uh, menu helper. We menu call it. helper. Roller, Here we go. Here it comes. And this is uh, please. But now it's Tuesday. <clears throat> How about Swiss steak tonight? <laughs> After the meat has been browned, just add the Swiss steak cooking sauce. Remember... The really critical thing in preparing delectable Swiss steak is the careful blending of the sauce. And the 15 ingredients we use couldn't be more delicately blended. Now, just simmer till tender. The result? A delicious tender Swiss steak that will win race. Thanks, Al. Al Gurney's Network Time Killers. All right, are we about ready to go here? Yeah. All right, we got a great show. Jeff uh, Altman is here, uh, Lyle Lovett is here, and uh, cartoonist Linda Berry, that and a lot of other stuff. Really, a lot of other stuff? Yeah. Really, a lot of other stuff? No, there's nothing else. <laughs> there's nothing else. Uh, anyway, we're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back.
Thank you very much. Well, David, as, as the gentleman in the audience mentioned, it's Canada Day today. Well, it used to be Dominion Day. When Canada was a dominion uh -huh. of the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. of the British Empire, right. it was Dominion Day. But now that Canada is its own thing, man, it is now Canada Day, July 1st. And, and so, how, how is that celebrated in your native country? Uh, we all uh, go down to the fishing, I don't know. We, we well, have, no, no, I mean, are there, are there fireworks? It's celebrated, are there, yes, there are fireworks and everything. Do people make fudge? Is there uh, contests of strength? And, everything that you would have uh, on the Potato floor. sack races and, uh, and uh, bare-knuckle boxing and, and uh, uh, Olympic events and uh, uh, balloons for the kids. Yeah, that's, that's what they got. <laughs> That speaking of Canada, speaking of Paul Schaefer, take a look at this. Paul, explain to us what we're gazing well, at here. Is, you know, Whoops. I'm sorry. I've been off for about four months. <laughs> and I big things with the vacation. lights is the camera. Here's Paul Schaefer. You look, you look very, uh, well, very this scholarly. Is me. This is me receiving, and this is absolutely true, uh, and on May 24th, I received... <laughs> Absolutely true. I'm uh, receiving an honorary doctorate degree, Doctor of Fine Arts, from the University, Lakehead University. Which Lakehead is my, University? My hometown yeah. university in Canada. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to say that I am a doctor now, and, and a woman asked me the other night, can I, will I be performing examinations? I, I can do that. So I, uh, I'm taking appointments after <laughs> Uh, our writers are not with us. There's a strike going on because the producers, the people who bring you fine television and motion pictures like uh, uh, Who uh, Killed Roger Rabbit, um, they're, uh, they're money-grubbing scum. Yes. That's why the, why the strike continues. Have you had a chance to see Who Killed uh, Roger Rabbit? I haven't made it over to the theater to see it's it It's the feel-good hit of the summer, Paul. Did you see it? I've seen, I've seen it. I've seen it four times. Uh, today, by the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I'll tell you up front here, it will be a subdued uh, celebration, but today, in fact, since the writers are not with us, it will be sort of less than we had hoped for, but it is our 1,000th show. Paul, do we have a look? There's some fluid in this balloon. Oh, I get it. Take that down to the lab and have the rest of the blood work brought to me tomorrow. Uh, it's our 1,000th show. What else are we doing today? Oh, I have a story. Do you want to hear a story? Yes, of course we want to hear a story. It's not much of a story. I'll tell you right away. And uh, because we're just trying to fill some time here, because normally we have top-notch professionally crafted hilarious comedy for you. Well, like Friday night, for example, would be viewer mail. Normally it would, yeah, yes. This is the first time we've been on the air without answering our viewer mail. Now, it's not me, ladies and gentlemen, it's not the writers, it's of course the money-grubbing scum. <laughs> All right, this is a brief little story, and I don't know if it's even a story so much as it is an anecdote, but I'm going to tell it right now because we still have about 51 minutes to eat here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other day I was motoring through my home neighborhood, quite a windy day, and I had the top down on the automobile, and I was smoking a cigar. This is what I do in my spare time. Sounds gorgeous. Suddenly I became aware of something unraveling off the lighted end of the cigar. And the next thing I know, there was a, a really noticeable, stinging, painful, burning sensation in my left nostril. <laughs> A red-hot ember from the tip of the cigar had blown up my nose. It, it makes you do this. Oh, gee. But ah. fortunately, and I guess you could understand this, yes. Mother Nature, in her infinite wisdom, has... The, the nose makes a wonderful natural extinguisher. That's the end of the story I for see. tonight. <laughs> and I live to tell about it. What is it time for now? Oh, here we go. You got music, Paul? Uh, yeah, I, whatever it is, I got music. Hal Gurney's Network ah. Time Killers. Take it away, kids. There's Hal right there. Hi, Hal. What do you have for us tonight? Well, we're pretty excited about this one, Dave. Uh-huh. Uh, take it. Here we go. 
Al Mar, our head prop man. Yeah, oh, there's Al right there. Right. He's going to reveal the secrets of the late night lockers. Oh, secrets of the late night right. lockers. Anytime you need it, he's ready. Al, uh -huh. Al, wave to us if he hears. Al, <laughs> it's all right. He hears us, Dave. And come back again. So, right. so anytime we're ready. Anytime you want that, it's there. Okay. So okay. Here we go. And if there would be a lull well, in the show, we go right, right to Al. Music. Okay. Al Gurney's Network Time Killers. There you. Go. Look at here, Paul. Look what I have here. It's a top ten list. Really? Yeah. Well, let me ask you. I'm, I'm confused. The, the strike must be over. I'm confused about something. Wouldn't that, that list be normally written by professional comedy writers? That's right. So that means that tonight's list comes to us from a different source. Really? Where right. is it coming from tonight? Let's see how it goes. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, it's our 1,000th show. Boy, we had Fair a little enough. party. NBC programming threw us a little party. Were you invited? Yes, I was invited. I was working on the Jimmy Cliff material oh, at the yeah. time. I was it was invited. nice. It was the kind of party that had you been a prisoner in a, in a Turkish prison uh, and you had been released, this is something the American embassy in Turkey might put together for you on your first day out. So it was very nice. Oh, it was, I'm told it was very nice. I couldn't go. You weren't able to attend. <laughs> I see. I couldn't be there. I <clears throat> I was called away on business. <clears throat> you ever get these? <clears throat> I got one now. Here we go. Uh, too much, yeah, I think you're right. Too much dairy products. <laughs> it's from the home office in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's our top ten list. Does the new guy understand this? He's ready, but he's okay. jumping in the gun. He's just jumping in the gun. Here we go. Tonight's category, top ten things that would delight and amaze our founding forefathers. Because this weekend, the 4th of July 4th of holiday. July weekend. Top ten things that would delight and amaze our founding forefathers. Here we go, number ten. Emo Phillips, number nine. Round-the-clock TV wrestling, number eight. Desire of most Americans to be taken seriously regardless of haircut, i.e. Reverend Al Sharpton. Number seven, Ed Meese, number six. It is still possible, though unlikely, that a boy from Indiana can grow up to host his own network television show without undergoing corrective dental surgery. Number five. Frosty hot new swimsuit colors for summer. I don't know. Number four. Virtual assurance that a guy like me can get cheap knee-jerk applause by mentioning that the TV and film producers are money-grubbing scum. <laughs> Number three, despite recent publicity, may still not be too late to bribe a Pentagon official. Number one, number two, did I mention Ed Meese? And number one, the number one top ten thing that would delight and amaze our founding forefathers, new from Kraft, Mexican Velveeta. Okay, this, uh, this show, we got a good show, and, and I can't even begin to tell you how good this show is. In fact, after you watch it, it will have seemed better than it was. So we'll do a commercial, we'll be right back, and join us, won't you? about me. Oh, right. Is that right. She loves Sean. Well, I can understand that. She's been using me. Just to get to Sean. To get to Sean. Yeah. Well. I introduced her to Sean three years ago at Warren Beatty's house. Listen to this, at Warren Beatty's I swear. house. <laughs> and she has been in love with him ever since. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. I'm no. not denying She doesn't her. care about me. Oh, no, well, that's, that's She's sad. been using me. Well. Our late night Lulu. <laughs> God. Listen, we, we, we're running a no, little wait short. A second. No, wait, we're I'm running. telling you the truth. Okay. Thank you very much. 
Thank you. Welcome. How are you, Paul? I'm marvelous, and may I say congratulations to you on the completion of 1,000 broadcast shows, which which we did yesterday. Yeah, but that no, it was it was Friday was our 1,000th. Well, Friday we taped our 1,000th show, but yesterday we broadcast our 1,000th show. Is that right, Morty? Yes, that's right. Now, how come I didn't See know that? that? <laughs> now, wait a minute. What do you mean? Now we we taped. Well, because we taped, we taped on. Thursday, but we did not broadcast a show on Thursday. We were preempted. Oh. So therefore, Friday, we had taped our thousandth show. Oh. But I we had only someone... aired nine. Yeah. Why nine, did it? Nine, nine, nine. Because I was very angry because yesterday there was this little party. These guys from uh, General Electric, this uh, Robert Wright, who is, oh. what is he? He's the CEO of NBC. President and CEO. President and CEO of NBC. NBC. NBC Broadcasting Properties. Correct. And you don't get any higher up in the broadcasting world than this guy, right? So yesterday, they, they show, uh, throw us this lame little party. <laughs> and after the show, they have cake and really bad champagne, kind of like airline champagne. <laughs> and so I was thinking, well, this is nice, but it's like two days late. And now you're telling me that it was actually the right day. Well, apparently it was, but it was not the right champagne. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, have a, I actually have a photograph of this. This took place uh, yesterday. Here it is, right here in this very studio. And I'm so stupid, I thought that they were like a weekend late. But here was the big party. <laughs> the, uh, the turnout yeah. was a little light. And really this, is, uh, this is Robert right there. He's holding himself in there case he, he herniates something. <laughs> and then everybody in the background, myself included, are saying to ourselves, ooh, we have to eat this now? <laughs> Lovely little party. That I was yesterday. A reception. And they gave me... <laughs> Hi, excuse me, ma'am. Pardon me. Excuse me. Hi, who? Who uh -oh. is that? There she goes. <laughs> who is that? Wendell, now who is that? A woman from where? An AD. An AD. What does that mean? An assistant director. An assistant director, and she comes up here and gives you what? A piece of paper, Dave. What, what are the... <laughs> Bring it up here, Bill. <laughs> He's leaving. I don't know, who is that woman? Why can she just walk in here like this? Now, of all times, security should be airtight around this building. And where did Bill go? I've never seen that woman before in my life. It was that, that wasn't Betty Crocker, was it? <laughs> I've never seen her before. She walks in here, she, she slips Wendell a note, and then she takes a hike. Where's the note? I don't know. Anyway, so, well, he's, he's, he's gone now, too. Uh, so, and this is what, what do you got? There he is. Nothing. <laughs> is she a friend of yours, Bill? Yeah, well, she was uh, downstairs. Okay, all right. She was downstairs. So anyway, at the big party yesterday, they, they had the cake with a thousand candles on it, and uh, Robert C. Wright was here, and some of the, the, the folks from uh, NBC were here, and we were all here. This is what they give me. Look at this. <laughs> Isn't that a beauty? This is, uh, this is a general... This is a uh, General Electric Four Slice Toaster, and I thought tonight, by God, <laughs> since, the, since the writers uh, are still on strike thanks to the producers, who, by the way, are what, Paul? What are the producers? They are uh, money-grubbing scum. Money-grubbing scum. <laughs> Paul, how do you like your toast? Do you like it light or do you like it dark? Well, sometimes I like it light, and other times I, I prefer it dark. What, <laughs> what would I do in a case like that? Well, we have two settings for uh, two different slices You're of toast. You're kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ed, it's all right here. We can, we, can, we can either have it not quite so light, uh, not quite so dark, or we can have it as dark as you want it. I'll oh. set uh, two different settings here. It's interesting to see two different settings at the same time. <laughs> This All is right. absolutely true, though. This is the toaster that Robert C. Yeah, they, they presented to me. We're going to make toast. We'll just see how long this thing goes before it blows out completely. So we'll make a little toast uh, during the show. we got plenty of bread here. And, uh, Hal, do you have anything for us? Uh, oh, it's time for uh, Hal. Well, we're waiting on our toast. Let's do our uh, Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers. Paul? <laughs> Hi, Hal. Go. Hi, Dave. Hal, while we're uh, waiting on the toast, what do you have for us tonight? Well, Dave, I know how much you like uh, balancing acts. Nobody likes them better than I do, yeah, Hal. Yeah, I guess you wonder where they're coming from these days. Well, 
Uh, just take a look at this. From New York City, from the Circus du Soleil, uh -huh. Eric and Emily. Take Eric one. and Emily. Eric. I got it. Eric and Emily. Uh, there they are, Dave and Dissolve And they're they're standing by, right, Hal, in case things come to a screeching Anytime halt. They're ready to come. Okay. <laughs> Kids, Eric, Emily. Music. What? I know, I know, Hal. I, you know, I didn't really want to see them again. I was, I was just going to offer them some toast. Bring them out one more time. No, let's don't bring them out one more time. We have here you go. There's some toast. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Stop that hopping up and down. Oh. Out of here. Yeah. Now, do they have something to do with that lady who was in here, Wendell? Well, they were downstairs. That one guy just keeps hopping up and down. Yeah, well, there you go, Paul. The, the lighter toast was finished, and uh, we're still waiting on the, uh, on the really dark toast. How are we doing on time? Three minutes. Let's just sit. Three more minutes? <laughs> Let's just sit here and wait on the toast. <laughs> toast. Anybody care for some toast? Careful, it's hot. Watch it, it's very warm. Look out! <laughs> A toast riot breaks out in midtown Manhattan. Load up another batch. So the dark toast takes about twice as long as the light toast, Paul. So I'm going to adjust this down and make them both the, uh, the same uh, shade of uh, toastiness. Same degree of... What do we do now? Top 10. You want to do a top 10 now? Mm. Mm. Wonder bread, Paul. Wonder yes. bread. Wonderful, Dave. Everybody here tonight gets toast. Wonderful. It's see, like see try, to, try to refrain from cheering and whistling because I'm afraid uh, Emily and Lyle or whoever that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just think that they've been cued and come back out here again and <laughs> start that pointless hopping around. What is, who is it, Emily and what? Uh, Emily, Eric. Eric and Emily. Eric and Emily. <laughs> That one guy has had too much coffee. <laughs> now, nah, how are we doing on time? So we don't, we, don't, we don't have time for this. We'll do it a little later. You want to do it now? <laughs> Careful. Uh, okay, from the home office in Lincoln, Nebraska. Ready, boys? Yeah. Uh, tonight's category, top 10 really nice things about New York City in the summertime. <laughs> top 10 really nice things about New York in the summer. Here we go, number 10. Uh, abundant wonderland of un unidentifiable smells. Well, that's right here. Number nine, out-of-towners overjoyed by secret hope that maybe they'll get to manage Yankees. Uh, number eight, air-conditioned comfort of bright, shiny, well-appointed subway cars. Excuse me. More toast! Look out! Be careful, it's hot! Uh, number seven, Ed Koch, usually out of town on business. Uh, number six, warm, thin air enables stray bullets to travel farther. Number five, first run Broadway plays wave, no shirts, no shoes, no service policy. Uh, number four, giant heat-seeking bat-like lizards swarm skyscrapers at night. 
Number three, most cab drivers in lieu of tip gladly accept gentle kiss on forehead. Number two, bobbing corpses in East River make perfect water ski slalom course. And the number one really nice thing about New York in the summer, tattoos, tattoos, tattoos. We'll uh, do a commercial. Oh, we got a, a great show for you. Stupid Human Tricks, John Cleese and Alan Havey. Come on back, folks. We'll be done in a minute. Well, I think it's an extremely well-balanced and exciting show tonight. We have a good show. I think this is a very good show, a very nice show for a Friday night, don't we you believe? We have a huge, we have some huge stars on the show. That's a right. Bruce content. Willis is here. We have a very... <laughs> very, very hip, late-night kind of gal, author, and uh, Tama Janowitz. Tama Janowitz is balancing here. Balancing things up. Henry, Henry Lee Summer, who, who, by the way, is from Indiana, my home state. A crazy Midwestern guy. Yeah. Seems awesome. like a very nice man, doesn't he? Lovely guy. Yeah. I was in uh, Indianapolis two weeks ago, by the way. Were you up there? Anybody here from Indianapolis? No. Thank you. <laughs> no, not up there, Paul. You don't say up there. You I was were over, cross. Out there. It's, I think it's southeast of here. So, I'm sorry, southwest of you here. You were down over. Oh, right. it was hot. Very, very hot. It was about 101 degrees. Terrible wind uh, blowing. Very hot, dry wind. What Part of that drought. Huh? What causes that? Well, I think it's a shift in the uh, jet stream. I see. Yeah. That's interesting. Shift in the jet stream. When I saw Mom... Did you give have her we had this conversation <laughs> before? <laughs> I think we've had this discussion one other night. We may have had... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody looking for ex-friends of John Gotti's out there in the beach. Um, but, you know, here, I don't know how... I guess the weather all over the country this summer is lousy, but here today, have you people noticed this moist green haze hanging in... Isn't that awful? Aren't you, aren't you frightened? And doesn't it make you doubly glad to be in here? Where you're about to see a fine entertainment program? Uh, Hal, um, do you have something we can look at while we're uh, waiting to begin the show? How about a time killer, Dave? Oh, great. One of Hal Gurney's network time killers. Let's do that now. Music. Paul, music, please. Hal Gurney right Hi, Dave. There. Hi, Hal. What do you have for us tonight? Tonight, Dave, 14 mimes. 14. I'm sorry? Can you hear me? What did you say? 14 mimes. <laughs> mimes. M-I-M-E-S. Okay, great, mimes. Hal. 14 and mimes. You're probably wondering where we got 14 mimes. Yeah, well, where did you get them, Hal? This is the plug. The Mime <laughs> Network, <laughs> Wizard Productions, Ted Fast Productions. Uh, you remember Ted. Yeah, don't, don't oversell it, Hal. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at them. All right, these are, they'll be ready anytime we need Music them, right? Music called and designed. Okay. Uh, mimes tonight, if we need them. I have an emergency group of mimes standing by. 14 mimes. Thanks, Hal. 14. 14. Okay. Uh. All seem to be trapped in something. Did you notice that, Paul? Uh, what do we do? Let's do the uh, top ten list here. Where did you go? There you are. Top ten? Uh, ton tonight's list, in all honesty, is, is quite lame. Uh, you know, we're in the middle of a Writers Guild strike. This comes to us from the home office in Lincoln, Nebraska. Paul, help me out with this. It stinks tonight. The top ten list stinks? Yeah, it starts out not so bad, then it gets a little bit better, and then it just goes to hell. I see. Who... Who wrote this? There are no writers. Well, we have no idea. This was just mailed in in an unmarked envelope. Ca came with a bonded courier up to the office. I see. He dropped this off and we have to read it. But I can tell you where it starts to go south. Long about number three. It just begins to make no sense whatsoever. The category, top ten jobs Ed Meese is thinking about taking. Now that he's no longer United States Attorney General. So he's thinking of jobs to take. Other jobs he might take. Exactly, Paul, this perfectly. List of the top ten jobs he might consider. Yes, once again, you've crystallized my thoughts beautifully. 
And it really, the tonight's really Stay. blows. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there's no writers on the show. Exactly. So, no, yeah, right. you, we you really, expect? there's no one to blame, is there? That's right. Yeah. Okay, top 10 Jones, 10 jobs. <laughs> top 10 jobs Ed Meese is thinking about taking. Number 10, Jones Beach Lifeguard. Number nine, makes no sense at all, bystander for NYPD crowd disbursement drills. What'd I tell you, Paul? Number eight, wed tech bribe liaison. Mm. Mm. Yep, gonna be a water skiing accident. Uh, number seven, Times Square video arcade change clerk pending security check. Number six, Al Sharpton's valet. Number five, Pentagon bribe liaison. God! Whew! Yeah, we ain't, you ain't heard nothing yet, kids. Uh, number four, bowling shoe counter clerk, pending security check. Number three, baseball player. <laughs> well, there's no writers on the show. It just dropped off the just table. The list. Number two, magician. Number one, fireman. Does this stuff work? Oh, they do. Jeez, we haven't done this in years. Uh oh, we had a misfire there. Oh, God. That's pretty much the same story as the top ten. Oh, that's pathetic. That's it? All right. Uh, we got a great show here. Bruce Willis, uh, Tama Janowitz, and uh, Henry Lee Summer. Come on back, folks. <laughs> Fifty-six minutes. <clears throat> uh, you have to excuse me if I seem a little dizzy tonight, uh, kind of having trouble locating myself in space. Uh, last night, I'm standing in line at the uh, tackle shop, and, and the guy behind the cash register saw me slip a trout lure into my pocket, and he, he hit me in the head with an oar. So I'm... <laughs> oh. <laughs> hit, me in, hit me in the head with an oar. <laughs> wow! Boy, did that guy look serious. Let's take a look at this man again, can we, Hal? <laughs> now, what color is that man's jacket? Is that, is it mauve? Let's see him again. Can we see it again, Hal? We're trying to identify the... What would you call, when you went into the store, sir, what color did you ax for? Purple. Pur thank you. <laughs> And that, that guy's from our nation's capital, isn't he, Hal? Do we have any idea who that is? Robert no. It's Robert who? Robert Wright? No. Robert Squire. Yes. And he's an NBC correspondent? No, he's a... He's a uh, political consultant. He's a political consultant. Yes. To whom? Dukakis. To Michael Dukakis. Yes. Oh, this is one of uh, his boys. <laughs> well, they got to do something about the jacket, that's for sure. 55 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. 55 minutes now. On the uh, program tonight, Charles Grodin, Carol Liefer, and the first female Boy Scout master, Catherine Pollard, is with us. Over there is our good friend Paul Schaefer. Now say hello to him, if you will. Thank you very much. Hi, Paul. Thanks so much. Will? And time? So, uh... Mm -hmm. Lisa. Thanks. These guys who appear on the screen, then... Right. These are people preparing to go on, waiting to go on on, on the national news. Is That's that right. At some point, they will be part of the network news package. Is and that we, correct? 
And we or, see or, them. We yeah. see them here in the building on the monitors. And it seems that Hal has the wicked opportunity to just punch them up on our screen. Right. Whenever he, he feels he's not like supposed, it. You're not supposed to do that. You're taking their people off their news broadcast. That's and just right. Putting them on our show without without any authorization. That's right. And it makes us vulnerable to li litigation. And, and then and then later we have to uh, sometimes pay these people. And and they come up and they have a list of things I've said about them, and they're not happy about it. I see. Like this bonehead will call in. Is Who are you Ann calling Miller? a bonehead? That's Ann Miller, another one of Dukakis's uh, consultants. <laughs> why, would, why would you call her a bonehead? I didn't call her a bonehead. See, Hal just punched her up as the word bonehead came out of my mouth. Well, Hal is a wicked human being, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, well, it's dangerous in there. And yeah. uh, uh, so we'll, we'll probably have to settle up with this guy at some other point. I was going to say something, and now I forgot what I was going to say. The, oh, uh, oh, the man in the, the audience asked me about my uh, carpet worms. Now, now last yeah. night I mentioned that I get these uh, carpet worms crawling all over my bedroom carpet. They're about that long and they're brown. And when you pick them up, they roll up into a ball. And I, and I had a couple of dozen of them swarming on the carpet. And a woman up there asked me, uh, was it a wool carpet? I don't know. Perhaps it is. And she suggested that it could be something to do with moths. Is that right, ma'am? Moth larva. Thank you very much. <laughs> Moth you know, I think it's possible for a person doing any kind of show, perhaps to live well into his hundreds without ever hearing that audience response. Moth larva. I think it could, it could be a first here tonight. That's right. Let's do an improv on it right now. No, let's don't. But I just, I just want you to know, Paul, if things go awry tonight, I'm this close to making toast again. <laughs> yes, Hal, just what is it? Reminder. Hal Gurney, ladies and gentlemen, our director. Yes, Hal? You know, uh, Larry Bud's always ready if you need him. Oh, great. Thank you very much, Hal, for pointing that out. I completely forgot all about it. Our, uh, our wonderful director, Mr. Mr. Hal Grooney, in there. Oh, that reminds me. Yeah, Hal Grooney. It's, uh, it's time once again for one of Hal Grooney's network time killers, Paul. Hi, Dave. There's Hal right there. Hi, Hal. How Hi, you doing? Dave. Fine, Dave. What, uh, what do you have for us tonight? Dave, remember uh, Connie Chung's special the other night? Uh, I believe it was entitled Guns, Guns, Guns. Right, right. Well, tonight it's Melons, Melons, Melons. Dissolve one. Melons, music. Melons, Melons. Very nice. Smells good in here. Thanks, Hal. And any time there's a problem with the show, we'll, we'll go right to the melons, melons, melons. Take one, take one. Thank you very much, Hal. Standing by. You're welcome, Dave. Yeah. Mm. Well, you do a complete stop. No, no, everything's fine, Hal. We're just, we're just catching our breath. Oh, look, Paul, it's a top ten list. Ah. The, I must say, since the writers have been away, the quality of the top ten lists ha have suffered, has suffered, noticeably. Let me ask you this. I, and tonight is no exception. But it's I've... fun just to have anything to count down from ten, isn't it? I have been Moth wondering. Moth larva. Thank you, ma'am. I've yes, been wondering Paul. about this. The writers are out on strike. We have no professional mm -hmm. comedy writers working mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. Who comes up with these top ten lists? These I find on my doorstep in the morning in a sealed titanium vault. I have no idea from where they come. I don't know how they get there. No, I don't. But thank goodness they do. Yeah. Uh, tonight's category. This, this, now, this is a great category. I have no problem with the category. Uh, top ten rejected Jeopardy categories. Fair enough. See? Fair See, enough. right away, the audience is on our side. Definitely. Watch how quickly they turn. <laughs> top ten rejected uh, Jeopardy categories. Here we go. Number ten. Things that ooze. Number nine, deathbed pranks. Number eight, noises dad makes. Number seven, number seven, what's that, ham? Number six, not available due to writer's strike. Number five, doorknob lore. Number four, number four, leading men who are really gay. 
Number, number three, presidential salads. Number two, uh, I'm this close to making toast. Number two, items found in wadded up napkins and... Hell, it's noise, I'll take it. And number one, the number one rejected Jeopardy category, moist things. Anyway, the worms, the worms are gone. Did I mention that? They're all oh, gone. What yeah. happened to them? I don't know what happened to them, but I, I have a feeling that they may be termite in the termite family, and one of these days my entire house will come tumbling down. They must have watched the show and gotten upset. <laughs> uh, we're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back here with Charles Grodin. Come on back, folks. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We've seen that guy, what is that, Lloyd Benson? Is that the senator, senator from Texas, Lloyd Benson? Nice to have you here. Good, good luck in the fall, sir. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. By gosh, I think, I feel, it seems to me, we really have a pretty good chance of doing a show here tonight. Smoke on the water. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Now, well, it happened again. You know, you're saying to yourself, gosh, Dave looks like he's in a great mood and, and terrific because we're here and, and we're happy he's in a great mood, but uh, it's not true. My day was nearly ruined. And I'm telling you, if this happens again, uh, I'm going to report somebody. I went upstairs to the uh, cafeteria here on the seventh floor and I'm having lunch. If Tom Brokaw, if Tom Brokaw tells me that joke one more time about Pinocchio's wedding night, I'm telling you, I'm gonna... <laughs> you know what would hit the spot just about now, kids? Another one of Hal Gurney's network time killers. Hal? Thank you very much, Paul. Hi, Hal. Hi, Dave. How you doing? Tonight, something special, Dave. Oh, good. Something special tonight, yeah, Paul, for uh, our Friday night telecast. What do you have tonight, Hal? Uh, presidential candidate Michael Dukakis mowing his lawn, Dave. Roll it, please. Presidential candidate Michael Dukakis and mowing his off. lawn. Well, this will be good. Dukakis mowing his lawn. Unbelievable, Hal. Nice job. Thank you very much. Anytime you need that, Dave, we have it ready as okay. a, as a right, time good. killer. And Hal Gurney's network time killers, ladies and gentlemen. Do you notice he was wearing gloves? 
I didn't notice that. Yeah. Protective gloves, yeah. that would be. Might have been. Oh, this is our good friend Paul Schaefer, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Say hello to Paul. Yeah. Thank you so very, very much. I, uh, I feel like I'm involved with the National Enquirer TV show or something. What's the matter? Well, what? that's that kind of footage you would see, isn't it? Wasn't that kind of National Enquirer footage? What? Just paparazzi somewhere in the... No, this is, this is legitimate, bona fide public events, kind of uh, the public needs to know information video. There it is again. You know, the, the, uh, we had a lady in the audience earlier uh, ask us about doing a viewer mail tonight, and of course we can't do a viewer mail tonight because uh, our writers are still uh, out uh, with the rest of the Writers Guild that happens to be on strike. And uh, last night we tried to show you uh, worms I found crawling on my carpet, and, and, and that didn't work. And one night we, we made toast for uh, everybody in the audience, and, and that was uh, pretty much like it sounds. One joke. One joke. We do, how many shows we do tonight, by the way? One show. We just do the one show. We're just doing one tonight, yeah. That's right, we're just doing one show tonight. It's not matinee day or anything. <laughs> ah, uh, did you have a good weekend? Great. Here's our good friend Paul Schaefer. Say hello to Paul. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, well, we always have a good time when this cat and I mean that when I say cat, when he comes by to sit in. Say hello, everybody, to contemporary guitar legend Brian Setzer, who is hello, Brian. with us today. He sounds really good, too. Thanks for being here. Did you have a hey, good weekend? Who, Brian or, or me? I don't care. I'm just trying to eat some Brian, time Brian, how here. was your weekend? He says he had a good weekend. Now, why, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing your voice coming out of this little box back here. And that's I know it. it's a little weird. Uh, yeah, is that is that the way it's supposed to, to be? Well, you. However, you that know, is the way it's supposed to be. Oh, oh, thank you very I much. Yes, this enables us to hear each other and therefore. Yeah, but I get the sense nobody else is listening. It's just you and I me. I feel like that too. That may may not have anything to do with the audio system, though. <laughs> and ah. this chair is a little lower than it ought to be. Excuse What's me. What's going here. on here? Well, I don't know. Somebody, something happened. And there's a fishbowl around us. For some a what? Reason. A fishbowl enclosing us. I don't Did sense that, that, Paul. That, <laughs> that, that may be something you did in your youth. Ah. I'm, t I'm torn right now because I have things to do or I could just make toast, and I don't know whether... I didn't have breakfast myself today. All right, let's just do some test toast. Let's All do right. some toast. We'll just try a couple of these, and if, if for some reason you don't find this entertaining, I'll just stop making the toast. Are you going to use the, the toaster that... Uh... That GE gave you? That's right. Use the uh, toaster that General Electric uh, gave me. <laughs> ah! Ah! I must have. I bet you I've done that joke 90 times on this show. <laughs> Always gets quite a laugh. How would you like your toast? Light or dark? <laughs> light, dark, light, dark. Well, coincidentally, we have settings for two separate slices of toast. <sighs> oh, there's no toast in there. You know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I discovered worms on my carpet in my bedroom. And uh, ever since then, people have been calling up to tell me that uh, they're not worms, they're earwigs. No, they're not earwigs, they're worms. And they're gone, by the way. Hal, do you have anything for us while we're making toast here? Sure, That's one of Hal Gurney's network time killers right there. Yeah, funny. And it's off for Hi, Dave. Hi, Hi, Al. What do, you, what do you have for us tonight? A uh, very special treat tonight, Dave. From New Orleans, Al Hurt. Al Hurt, the legendary Al Hurt in the control yeah. room, Paul. There Hit he is. Hit it, Al. It's hot in here, too. It was in great. addition to the audio problems, it's hot. Are you a little hot, Paul? Uh, this is the only time I would ever admit it, but it's a little warmer than usual. It's a little, little warmer there. Yeah. Paul, some toast music? Some toast music. Michael Palin is here tonight. Al Unzer Jr. is here. And uh, Brian Setzer, whom you've uh, met. All right. Uh, let's do the uh, top ten list while we're waiting for the toast, ladies and gentlemen.
That, that response is premature and I can guarantee you unfounded. Uh, from the home office in Lincoln, Nebraska, tonight's category, top ten questions Democrats hope to have answered in Atlanta. You know, they're convening in Atlanta, Paul, to select their uh, ticket for the uh, 88 uh, election. So I understand. Yeah. That's and going this would on. be then? This would be the questions that they want to clear up. The, the, they want to have answers to these questions by the time they by adjourn the time and, and get on to the campaign for the general election. I see. Uh, top ten questions Democrats hope to have answered in Atlanta. Get it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just a minute. You know, once we get this toast ready to go, I think you folks will be stunned by the aerodynamic properties of toast. <laughs> this stuff sails better than any Frisbee. Now, it's coming along quite nicely, as a matter of fact. Here we go. Top ten questions Democrats hope to have answered in Atlanta. Number nine. Number nine, it's harder to come up with ten of these little lame jokes than you think. Uh, number eight, does Lloyd Benson have any ethnic heritage whatsoever? Uh, number seven, wait a minute, we've got toast! Hold it! Now that's, that stuff, didn't that stuff sail good? Wasn't that amazing? New from Mattel. All right, I'll make one. I'll make one more batch of toast and then you kids have to go to bed. Uh, number seven. Uh, how has his failed campaign affected the quality and quantity of Gary Hart's girlfriends? Number six. Will Dukakis be able to find an attorney general who's as goofy, lovable, and crooked as Ed Meese? Number five. Will elderly Dukakis voters be frightened by so-called eyebrow factor? Number four, not available due to Writers Guild strike. Number three. Is Lloyd Benson the guy who did the denture commercials? I don't know. Uh, number two, are some Jackson supporters under the mistaken impression he would make a good president because of his impressive showing in the 36 Olympics? Any second, I can hear it. It starts to make little noises before it officially becomes toast. I love when they do that. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? Number one. One. Number one, do we really want a president who looks like Casey Kasem? <laughs> toast. Ordinary white bread toasted. Watch how well it flies. Okay, we got to do a commercial. Michael Palin is here, Al Unzer Jr., and of course, Brian Setzer. We'll be right back, folks. Paul Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Paul, you so how much. are you? I'm marvelous. I'm absolutely marvelous. I'm in a little bit of a quandary. What's though. the matter? I started to talk to you about What's it. What's the problem? The 
Well, as I, as I told you, I'm going to, uh, this Saturday, I'm going to Milwaukee. Milwaukee? Uh, to do the national anthem at, uh, at a baseball game, the Milwaukee. For the, for the Brewers? Milwaukee Brewers. Well, that's playing, great. Playing the Texas Rangers. That, that's very exciting. Have you ever done that before? I've never done it. I was yeah. very excited. And then I, I, I got, just got a message, what key do you sing the anthem right. in? Right. And I said, sing? Yeah. Because I... You know, I thought I'd have a lovely piano out in the middle of the thing. No. I don't know what, and and no. play a fabulous instrumental version of mm. of the Star Spangled Banner. No, you got to sing. You can play. I think playing is nice to accompany yourself. I think that's very nice. That's yeah, a nice touch. That playing part is nice. Yeah, yeah. and you know you're going to get a top flight piano out there in center field. But, uh, <laughs> the, you're gonna, I'm no singer. You're going to get the piano that the grounds crew uses. <laughs> So you got to sing. That would be fine, but I'm, you know, first no, of all, I'm, sing. I'm, I've I'm, heard you I'm no singer, and you know that it is, I'm told, the most difficult song. Well, uh, do something else. In the world. Well, no. <laughs> Pick another song. The gig is for one, they had a, one request. Yeah. The, the Star Spangled Banner. You know, you I could do, you could do and we've had this discussion before, O Canada, which is a great song. One thing I don't want to do is, is a Robert Goulet. You remember him at the fight. Yeah. When he sang the Star Song and Spangled Banner and forgot. Yeah, all no, the words no, don't to do it. it. So you're saying you're just going to play? I know it. the words to it. Yeah. Well, I but think I you, should, you should consider be, singing it. I'll probably be playing a virtuosic, if that's a word, instrumental version of. Virtuosic? Virtuosesque version of the, uh, of the banner of the Star Spangled Banner. Will this game be televised? Can I'm we see sure, this? I'm not sure, actually. Are you getting Bruce. paid for this? A lot of dough? Absolutely not, no. Really? Favor to uh, somebody in uh, the record company. Oh, it's, see, I knew there was going to yeah. be a record company deal here. It's a I little, knew there would be a uh, favor like I had that. to do. No, you should do that as a visiting friend of this nation to go and participate in the, the national pastime. Well, I am doing that. I'm yeah. receiving no compensation for it. I'm doing it as a, for the nation and for a guy, you know, John Faggot in the promo department of, uh, of, of Capitol. <laughs> Swear to God, that's his name. I'm just going to let... I swear, there's the censor, the NBC censor. It's his actual name. It's Hal's date for the evening. Hal has a, <laughs> Hal has a date in the control room tonight. He's bringing, bringing babes in to watch him direct. <laughs> yeah, settle back, relax, have a couple of cigarettes, we'll get you a cocktail. <laughs> yeah, I direct the show. Uh, well, anyway, that's it. Uh, did you see? Uh, did you see Jesse Jackson last night at the convention? Did you folks see this guy's speech? I get to see the. <laughs> see, I have a theory. I just there. Well, there he is now. <laughs> Thank God. I just have a theory. Don't you think that that politics aside, and forget about being Republican or Democrat or any other compass point on the political horizon. Forget about all of that. <laughs> This guy, give it to this guy. He's a, he, he gives great speeches. Wouldn't you? I mean, every couple of months you could hear one of those things and you'd feel good about yourself and you get up and go to work the next day. Just... It looks like he's standing in the hallway out there now, doesn't it? I mean, it's better than like with Reagan. And, and again, forget about your differences or your, your feelings of support for Reagan. But aren't you tired of hearing little anecdotes about when he was a sportscaster? I think you're tired of him, but this guy is, well, boom! Anton, a little... Well. We got a good show for you tonight, don't we? Don't we? Excellent yes, show. Yes, a fabulous yeah. show tonight. Hal, do you have a little uh, network time killer for us tonight? Sure, Paul? a little music day. All right. Uh, Hal Gurney, ladies and gentlemen, and another one of his network time uh... killers. Hi, Dave. Hi, Hal. Uh... Little Why don't you introduce thing? your little friend in the back there, Hal? Yeah. James, can you stand up, please? Yeah. Nice to meet She's you, She's shy, man. Dave. Uh -huh. I'll talk to her after the show. Okay. Okay. See you later, Jane. Okay. Uh, Dave, I don't know if we can top the excitement of last night when we had Al Hurd here in the control room, but we'll try. Okay. Uh, I'd like to say happy birthday to two marvelous ladies. Oh. Carl? Here we go. This is uh, Maybelle Crosley, uh -huh. 100 years young today, years Eureka, young. California. <laughs> Hit a floor. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this lovely lady, Dave. Mrs. Catherine Barnes. Catherine 105 Barnes. years young today. 105 years. Very nice. Uh, and she's all there. <laughs> la, 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 la. 
you know we're in trouble when we start stealing from Willard Scott. If that's all we can come up with, you know it's fumes and vapors. We may not make it back to the airport. Here we go. Uh, tonight's top ten list from the home office in Lincoln, Nebraska, where that terrible drought continues. Yes. Uh, the category top ten things you'd rather not hear on a long flight. Top ten things you would rather not hear on a long flight. Now, these can be things you overhear being said, uh, noises, things like that. But either way, whatever it is, these are things that you would rather not Exactly, hear. Paul. Perfect. Once again. On a flight. You have crystallized my thoughts eloquently. On a long flight. <laughs> Number ten. There will be no in-flight movie today because the projector is broken. Well, sure, you'd rather not hear that on a long flight, would you? You wouldn't want to hear that. No, absolutely not. Number nine. You know, I really shouldn't be drinking in this turbulence. Number eight. Number eight. This is your captain speaking. In a few minutes, we'll be passing over the Persian Gulf. Now you don't want to hear You wouldn't want to hear that. Uh, number seven, today's in-flight movie will be A Fine Mess starring Howie Mandel and Ted Danson. Number six, here's something you wouldn't want to hear on a really long flight. Footsteps on top of the fuselage. Number five, uh, well, I guess we're going to find out now if these seat cushions really do float. No, you wouldn't want to... Number four, muted screams from the cockpit. No, you wouldn't want... Number three, not available due to Writer's Guild strike. Number two. Number two, here's something you really wouldn't want to hear. Any really loud bending metal noises. Kind of like that. And the number one thing you would really rather not hear on a long flight. Hello, I'm Bryant Gumbel. Is this seat taken? That's it? That's it? We're ready to go. Uh, great show. Jack, Hannah, Eddie Murphy, and the Countess of Romanones. Come on back, folks. Listen, do you like do you like this design? That looks I'm great. It looks uh, it looks uh, great. Well, it's by a, a new uh, downtown Soho artist who I'm supporting. He's very very talented, <laughs> and uh, I've brought him actually over from. Uh, uh huh. <laughs> brought him over from where? I, I just bought. <laughs> I have nothing. I, I don't. I didn't really. Look, Paul. I, I checked something out in rehearsal. It works perfectly. Get ready. Uh -oh. Any minute now. The room will be filled with, uh, here they come. <laughs> Don't we feel better now? Uh, tonight is a Friday night, and normally on Friday night we would be answering our viewer mail, but we can't because... Uh, there's a Writers Guild strike uh, currently going on. It's going, it's uh, entering actually its eighth year. The writers have been on strike now <laughs> for eight years, and they're not coming back because of the uh, producers being money grubbing scum and so forth. <laughs> so instead of being able to answer our voluminous viewer mail, what do we do, Paul? Well, we had you measured for a suit. Oh, that's right. We got the guy with the suit, and he's back. He came in, he came in on uh, Tuesday night, and he took my measurements, came in on Wednesday night, did something else. Came in on Thursday night, did pretty much the same thing he did on Wednesday night. Yeah. And then tonight, I understand the gentleman is here with a brand new suit. Yeah. And uh, we'll be taking a look at that in a couple of minutes. Paul will be in uh, Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin over the weekend singing the national anthem. Not, uh, I will be, I will be performing the national anthem. Singing, right? You're going to be singing I will it? not be singing it all yeah. by myself. I may lead a, a sing along, a uh -huh. sing of, I may lead a sing. Singing of along. the anthem. Yeah. Well, you, you better yeah. sing it, or you'll be disappointing the, a lot of uh, 
residents of I, America's Dairyland. Well, I don't know about that, but I'm, we're going to have a wonderful time. I'm going to be singing at the beginning of the... I'm going to be uh, performing it at uh -huh. the beginning of the... Do you know uh, the words? You don't know the words, do you? Being I, a Canadian, of course, being a Canadian, you wouldn't know the words. Well, you remember Goulet on the, when he sang at that big fight. I totally forgot the words. Forgot the words. Well, he was yeah, Canadian also. He is also Canadian, yeah. That so, won't happen. To me. Yeah, he's going to be... Because I'm just going to be playing it. 45,000 angry people there. No, no, no. When, when you not, not singing it and then also not singing it, forget the words. Picked up the I picked up the sheet music. You I picked up the sheet music today, just in case. All right. So uh, it does. Did you know there are four verses to the Star Spangled Banner? No. What's What's the second verse? On uh, On the shore, dimly seen through the mists of the deep, where the foe's haughty host in dread silence reposes. What well, is that, that which the breeze or the towering steep, <laughs> as it fitfully blows, half conceals, half discloses? Yeah. You know what you should do, Paul, is lead them in a sing-along with that one. <laughs> do that verse. Now it catches okay, the Paul, gleam uh, Paul, thank you. of the morning first beam in full glory now as it shines in the stream. All right. Uh, it's time now, ladies and gentlemen, for another one of Hal Gurney's Network Time Killers. Boys? Hi, Dave. There's Hal Gurney right there. Good evening, Hal. What have you planned for us tonight? Uh, Dave, I'm sorry, we don't have anything. I, we've been pretty busy. Uh, I couldn't come up with anything. Pete, nothing? Nothing anything? at all? No, no. Jack, do you have anything? <laughs> Jack. No, <laughs> Jack doesn't have anything, Dave, yeah. Uh, but... Al Mar, a head prop man, uh -huh. uh, said he might have something oh, for good. us. Let's, Let's take a look at Al. Al. All right. All right. I mean, Al? <laughs> Al? Go ahead, Al. We're ready. He looks... Go ahead, Al. He... Ready? Uh, and come back. Yeah. He may not have I any. don't think he hears ready. us, Dave. We'll get back to him later. And okay, this, uh, thanks, yeah. Al. Yeah. Al Gurney's Network Time Killer is once again a bust. Let's go. Uh... All right, let's, let's bring out the guy. Now, this is really quite something. In four days, this man has been able to hand-build a suit. His name is Joseph Rituro. Joe, come on out here. And I believe we have the... Uh... Yes. Thank you. It's such a pleasure and an honor, isn't it, being able to be beamed out into America every That's night? That's right. We, we go across the continent, all over North America. We go down into Mexico. We go up into Canada. It's coast a to coast. We go overseas. Some of the uh, men and women in uniform on Armed Forces Radio and Television view us at their post, their lonely outpost, guarding the freedoms That's of right. this great land of ours. And as Billy, as Billy Preston says at the end of his Vegas act, it's my pleasure to uh -huh. entertain you That's this right. evening, friends. Right. And it is. And... And <laughs> so? Huh? So what? So, how are you? Well, you know, my, my ribs, uh, every time I breathe, my ribs ache a little from where that policeman well, pushed you... me in Los Angeles. I think That's I may... a very mysterious event now. It's shrouded in secrecy. Oh, it's know. hard to get to the bottom of what really happened. <laughs> Originally, I think maybe I just cracked a rib. Now I think a couple of them are busted. Now what really... You were roughed up by some cops. Uh... <laughs> Isn't that what no, I wasn't roughed up. But, you know, before I die, just once, I would like to have that in the paper, that I was roughed up by a couple of cops. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, what are we doing? Well, we're doing a, a show. We're doing a show. Late night with David Letterman. We're, no, we're not killing time. No, no, we've got some, we got a legitimate show here tonight. I tell you what, I'm torn here. I have, uh, I have, maybe we can decide here what to do. I can either tell you my two new Paul Newman stories. Yeah, well... <laughs> One person. Uh, or we could just make toast. Yeah. All right. A couple of months ago in Phoenix, I ran into Paul Newman. Yeah. And uh, uh, had never met the man before. This was at a race in Phoenix. Mm. And, uh, Car race. An automobile race, exactly, Paul. You were racing? No, I wasn't racing. I was spectating. And he? He was, uh, he was not racing. He owns a race car team. A racing he was an team. owner. Co-owner. I see. 
So he was hiding away in his little trailer, and, and uh, Debbie Rahal, the wife of Bobby Rahal, Bobby. says, would you like to meet Paul Newman? And I said, well, sure. You know, who wouldn't like to meet Paul Newman? You were with Debbie Rahal at the time? No, I wasn't, but she was there, and I was there, and I was with my friends, and she was with her husband and family. Okay. Oh, let's make toast. No, okay. <laughs> so anyway. No, no, wait a minute. Let's see. Hear me out on this thing. It's the kind of story that might grow on you, all right? Yes. Give me a second here. So we chat, me and Paul and a couple of my friends, we, we talk and we have a normal discussion, and I thought, this is pretty keen, Paul Newman, Mr. Big Time. So I was impressed. So then a, a month later... <laughs> All right. So a, a month later, I'm, I'm at another automobile race in Indianapolis. Yes. And I see Paul Newman coming up the stairs of this big, huge building. And again, I'm with some friends, and I think, here's my chance. I can impress my friends. They'll think that I know Paul Newman, because, in fact, I, I do know Paul Newman, and we had this one conversation. Okay. So Paul's coming upstairs. He's dressed all in white, cute little white hat, cute little white shirt, cute little white pants, cute little white shoes. And so I stepped right in front of him, and I said, hello, Paul. And Paul did and said this. Mm. <laughs> and he kept on going. So I just, you know, I thought, well, who knows what the deal was. Yeah. So now, a couple of weeks ago, we're at the race over there in the Meadowlands, and again, I see Paul Newman, and I'm with another group of friends. In fact, people from work here. My assistant and uh, Jude Brennan and uh, who else? Barbara Gaines, and just, we had a big time. So the kids are all there, and I see Paul Newman riding up on this little cart, and I said, uh, I jumped right in front of him this time. <laughs> and I said very cheerfully, hello, Paul. And Paul did this and kept going. So later in the day... <laughs> so he snubbed you three times, basically. Two so. times now. This is two. So later... Oh, here, I have photos. Maybe, maybe the problem is I didn't show you the photos. Here, look. Here's some photos of Paul. See, he's uh, basked in this heavenly glow there. <laughs> There's Paul. Now, here's the final installment of the uh, Paul Newman story. Now, at the end of the day, we're, we're someplace having a, a beverage, and Paul is this close to me. Literally, that's Paul, and I'm sitting right next to him, and I again said, Hello, Paul! <laughs> nothing. Nothing. So he either, one, is hard of hearing, or two, he knows who it is. <laughs> Gee, I... <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yes, that's it! <laughs> Maybe we'll have toast, maybe we won't. <laughs> Let's see what uh, Hal Gurney, our director, has planned for us tonight. Hal, do you have a uh, network time killer ready to go? Hal Gurney, ladies and gentlemen, our beloved director with his uh, network time killers. Hi, Dave. Hi, Hal. Do you hear me? Yeah, did you enjoy the Paul Newman story, Hal? Terrific. Thank you very much. I've heard much. it before, though, you know, Dave. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dave, tonight, a uh, real special treat. We're all looking forward to this. We've flown in from the coast, uh -huh. California. Yeah. Uh, the Del Rubio twins. Sisters, go design. <laughs> We gotta get going, where are we going and what are we gonna do? We're here in the big apple, the three of us and you. What do we do now, what do we see now, what do we do surprise? We hope to entertain you and make your spirits wise. Hello everybody, we are the Del Rubio triplets. Millie on my right, Edie on my left. I'm Elena, hello. Let's get going, cause we're gonna have a happy time. Okay. No, sir. All right. Thank you very much, Hal. Let me get this straight. They're twins or sisters or triplets? I bet they're triplets. They are triplets, yeah. but are they also sisters? They're sisters, too. They're sisters and triplets. What a coincidence. Okay. We, uh, we have a, a great show for you folks tonight. Who's on the big telecast? Oh, Tony Randall is here. Anthony Edwards. And uh, special effects artist Bob Short. Paul, anything you want to jump in here with? Just that I'm looking forward to it, and that was some hell of an opening. <laughs> well, That's all I can good. say. Good. Thank you very much. We'll do a commercial and uh, collect our thoughts and be right back. <laughs> yeah, 
Have you seen the John Deere lawnmower commercial? Mm, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. If you haven't seen it, you'll think I'm making this up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it defies it. You're on the grounds of a convent. Mm -hmm. Anybody seen it? All right. The mother superior... The mother superior is talking to the camera. In the background, you see a nun on a John Deere lawnmower, power lawnmower, and the mother superior says into the right of the camera, sister patience can mow this whole place in one afternoon where it used to take four men three days to do it. It's a miracle. You haven't seen this? No, it sounds familiar. Yeah. And then the sister on the lawnmower drives up to the mother superior and says, how long will this machine last, mm -hmm. mother superior? <laughs> and she says, nobody knows. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Isn't that a beaut? Now, do you think those are actual nuns? Don't let me down. You have found her. Start to make it better, 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 la 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 Sisters. I'm sorry, Hal. Sisters. Triplets. Oh, I thought I was confused for a minute. <laughs> no. Have you seen the new... <laughs> Just keep going, huh? <laughs> I, think, I think that's probably wisest. Just keep motoring on. I got another one. Okay. Oh. So do they. <laughs> they got a whole damn album. <laughs> Maybe we can get it and have the gang over and play it. All right. All right, we're, we're actually leaving the air a little early tonight to get upstairs and have our big meeting. Uh, thank you very much for being here, folks. We'll see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. Oh, no! You don't really mean to imply that saying hello to me is a, is a prelude to what will be a great show. Oh, it's, no, no, Paul, you're included in the wonderful show. It's part of. No, no, it's really, the yeah. wonderful show begins promptly at 1230. Absolutely. Please so be in your seat. Saying hello to me is just one part of, just the, one part of, 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 of the fact that And many evening. nights, it's the highlight of the wonderful well, show. Well, it's nice of you to say. How have you been? I've been marvelous. I love the heat. Oh, I, boy, no, I don't care for it. It's been, I guess it's been sweltering everywhere in the United States, but here in New York City, it's just been really it's been nasty. Really, yeah, well, to me, it's glamorous and, and fun. And How hot do you think it was when I woke up this morning? Now, I don't live in the city per se. You live outside the city. I live outside the city, which yes. is not in the city per se, and gosh, I love saying per se. I oh, you know. I used to actually live in per se, New Jersey, but then I moved out of there per se, and here I am. How, how hot do you think it was this when morning? When you woke up? Yeah. I mean, you have a thermometer in your I do, room. right out my window. Outside your window. That's right. In a, shaded, in a shaded area. Well, what time did you wake up? I got up, of course, at the crack of dawn. It was about 5.42. Uh, I believe it. No, I got up, I don't know what time it was, 7? Early-ish. 8, yeah, early -ish. Okay, so it was 75 degrees, I think. 117. 117 degrees. That's right. That's right. Well... <laughs> And it just kept getting hotter. It's an unusual little topographical location where I am, per se. Hal, Hal, do you have a uh, network time killer for us? Our uh, d uh, beloved director, Hal Gertner, with his uh, fascinating network time killer. 
lovely shot of the control room. There's yeah. Hal. H hello, Hi, Hal. Dave. How are you? Do you hear me, Dave? Yes, we can hear you just Very fine, good. Hal. Uh, Dave, tonight the uh, time killer is one of the uh, favorite spots that Jane Crowley uh, seems to ask for all the time. <laughs> uh -huh. Which and one is Jane Crowley, Hal? Could you point oh, her out? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Jane. Yeah. Right. Nice to see you. Yeah. All right. This is for you, Jane. You going right. out later, Jane? <laughs> she okay. always looks so nice, doesn't yeah. she, Paul? Yeah. She's nice a to see you. She's a lovely lady. Yeah. Uh, Carl, back to me, please. Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dave, this is a... Uh, camera shot back on him. Yeah, a, a chance for us to uh, salute some of the most loyal supporters. Uh, All right. Uh, happy birthday to Paul. A little music, please. Oh, this Here is great. Go. These are the uh, yeah. birthday pictures. Carl, you want to come in? Yeah. Here we go. Say happy birthday, Dave, to David Doyen. Happy birthday, Dave. 100 years young today. 100 years young today. There's more. Hold it. Hold it, please. Uh, you see him with part of the wood he has uh -huh. split since March. Right. You can okay. imagine how busy he's been. And here's here's old Dave. Seems like this segment has been on since March, right, Al. Yeah. If you want to, maybe we'll cut it to two birthdays tonight. <laughs> and here he is with his maul, ready to uh, split the rest of the with wood. With his what, Hal? Maul. M a u l. You know, the with split his wood. Oh. Yeah. Right. I see. <laughs> uh, Happy birthday Why, to... Why, what lovely hands you have, Hal. I... <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Nice. Happy birthday to Anna Mae Kendall, Waukesha, Wisconsin, 100 years young today. Years young today. She, well, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Okay. One more, Dave. I can't, say, can't leave without <laughs> saying happy birthday to Jack Nelson. Uh-huh. Uh, how old do you think he is? He's, uh, well, probably about the same uh, as it was hot this morning, 117. No, 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 Dave. He's only 105 years young. Oh, Columbus, Ohio. 105 years young. Thanks, Hal. Thank you, to be here and I know you are too because we got a great great show planned we got gags and laughs and I just know that you are th as thrilled as I am to be out here entertaining America that's right <laughs> let's what see if our good friend Hal uh, uh, Grooney has anything for us tonight what are you Oh, I'm sorry, Hal Gurney, our director. All right. All right. Hal, do you have something uh, that we can uh, fill up a little time with uh, here tonight while we're waiting for the big show to kind of settle in and gel? No, Dave. I don't. It's <laughs> oh, and look, it's one of Hal Gurney's network time killers. Let's do that. Hi, Dave. Well, there's Hal right there. Good evening, Hal. How are Hi, you Dave. doing? Can you hear me, Dave? Yes, I can, Hal. Good. Dave, tonight we're very lucky. How would you describe the mood in the control room tonight, Hal? Uh, tense, Dave. Uh huh. Tense. <laughs> yeah. All right. What do you have for us tonight? Well, uh, this is really something special. Uh, Jack Rollins has come up with this one, Dave. Jack Rollins, my right. personal manager for over 35 That's years. That's right. There's yeah. Jack. Hello, Jack. Hello, David. Nice okay. to see you. All right. Widen up. Here we go. And Jack, this is for you. Mr. Lucky and his performing dogs. Oh, good. So, Mr. Lucky and his performing dogs. This will be interesting. Wow. Nice job, Hal. We really enjoyed that. Thank you very much for that contribution to tonight's program. You know what else we were going to do tonight? We had a uh, camera that we had nailed to the uh, side of the building down on 6th Avenue, and we were going to have people just walk by and perhaps look in, and we thought it would be amusing from time to time during tonight's broadcast just to take a look at what people in New York City look like when they're walking uh, home from work on, on a Friday evening. So we have some videotape of this earlier uh, while we were looking at this in rehearsal, and here's what it... See? Now look at that. 
See, now this would have been solid entertainment and, and pretty amusing. This is 6th Avenue. It's a very hot, muggy day again here in New York. How do you do, ma'am? Nice to see you. Yeah, we're giving physicals there, as you can see. And uh, we were going to just do this periodically throughout the, uh, the course of the show. And then uh, somebody at uh, the people who run this building, RCI, they found out about it and they said, no, you can't, you can't do that. So they came down and there they are, the guys in the uh, suits. And you can see the man on the left is prying the camera away from the wall. He's tearing it down, actually ruining our little uh, bit of comedy there. And that was it. So we don't, we don't even have that for you tonight. Don't even have that for you tonight. Did I miss something on that, was it? No, that was pretty much it. This is a real lull, isn't it? Uh, but we do have, ladies and gentlemen, we do have for you another top ten list tonight. Yes, Hal? Remember, roll tape. <laughs> oh, we have, sure, we always have. Calvert is always ready. Calvert is always standing by. Geez, that's odd. I'm, I'm sweating bullets. <laughs> uh, how, how would that have happened? Uh, anyway, actual small caliber bullets. <laughs> sweating them right now. <laughs> Let's do our top ten list. Tonight's category, top ten other pranks planned by Matthias Roost. You know who this guy is, Paul? Yeah, I, I, he's, the, he's the kid who drove the plane into uh, That's Red right. Square. He flew from West Germany into Red, and landed right in Red Square. Right. Was and it West Germany or East Germany? West Germany. West Was Germany. it West Germany or, or East Germany? It was West Germany. Ah. That's right. Right in, buzzed the Kremlin, landed in Red Square. They put him away, didn't they? Yeah. He was there for 11 years, 11 months. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, 11 months. The, the original sentence was four years, and he got out after 11 months. When did he get out? Just recently, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I really need a nap. <laughs> Ah, he uh, recently was released. That's right. They flew him home to Germany not too long ago. So what would, this, this what would this list have to do with then? <laughs> <laughs> M Mr. Lucky, are you ready to go again? Is he ready, Hal? Oh, good. Let's Thank you very much, Mr. Lucky. Thank you. <laughs> I wonder what his apartment smells like. <laughs> anyway, Matthias Roost. Oh, that's the kid who uh, flew the plane into a... Uh, that's right. Landed right there in Red Square. Released him just recently. That's right. So earlier this week. this list be then? Top ten other pranks that he is planning. Ah! <laughs> Top ten other pranks planned by Matthias Roost. Uh, this one, planned. yeah, planned. This one is really lame, by the way. Tonight's oh. one, this one really blows. Tonight's does. <laughs> Seems like they used to be funnier when we had writers. These used oh, to be well, really funny, didn't they? There could be a reason. For yeah, that. I'm getting these from people in the commissary now. So this is our last writerless show, then. Yeah. Well, the yeah. We'll be That's what we understand. Season. Sure. Okay. Uh, number ten. I don't want to read number 10. Number 9. Number 9. Number 9. <laughs> There's some kind of confusion in the control room now. Number... Number 9. Our survey said... I think we have to do 10 first. Mr. Lucky! <laughs> Ali, Ali, hop. Yeah! Come, 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 Ali, Ali, hop. Yeah! Come on, Chief, baby, 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 Ali, come, hop. Hey!
Yeah, some kind of ASPCA authorities coming in here. All right, so what do we do? Let's just do a commercial. Huh? No, let's... Number 10. Place flaming bag of manure on Gorbachev's front door, ring bell, run away. I'm not proud of that. Number nine, not available due to Writers Guild strike. Number eight, sneak into state dinner and invite President Reagan to help himself to a lovely can of peanut brittle. Ha! Number seven, not available due to Writers Guild strike. Uh, number six, using a Reagan impression, phone U.S. missile installation, try to get one launched for Nancy's birthday. Number five, litter Long Island beaches with medical waste. Well, someone's beaten him to that one. Number four, sit an audience of classic concentration and shout puzzle answers despite being warned by Alex Trebek. Uh, number three, send phony 100-year-old birthday request to Willard Scott just to hear name on today's show. Number two, not available because it was stolen by no good high school kids who hang around home office during summer. Help! And the number one prank planned by Matthias uh, Roost, run on the field during Mets game and kiss Lenny Dykstra. <laughs> Father uh, Sarducci is with us, Steve Forbert and Jerry Hall.